Today I'm going, okay, going to uh, talk about how we launch a commercial public path service successfully with Cloud Foundry. So I'm Yuda Iwasaki from NTT and I have been working on Cloud Foundry for about two years. Uh, this is uh, the outline of my session today. Uh, first, uh, I briefly introduce my company and our public cloud service named Cloud N. And then uh, I'll explain uh, why we chose uh, Cloud Foundry as the base system for our service, and yes, uh, how we developing, uh, how we have been developing uh, our service with Cloud Foundry. Let me introduce our company. Uh, we, the NTT Group, is Japanese telecom company, and it is uh, one of the biggest uh, telecom company in, in the world. And we are providing various network services all over the world, and now we are uh, working on Cloud Foundry as our uh, global cloud uh, strategy. Uh, we launched a uh, public cloud service uh, last year. Uh, it is named Cloud N, and it has many useful functions uh, such as IaaS, uh, load balancers, data storage, and databases, and of course, a uh, path service based on Cloud Foundry. Cloud N service uh, now offers uh, three, uh, three, four data centers in Japan and the United States. And now we are planning to extend their available regions and at the end of this year, uh, another data center in the Asia Pacific region will start operating. So if uh, this session sparks your interest in uh, our service, please try CloudN later. <laughs> Well, let's move on to the main topic uh, of my presentation today. This is an overview of uh, our cloud and path service. And, uh, the service, uh, we launched the service last uh, March, and it is uh, based on Cloud Foundry version one. And of course, it is compatible with the Cloud Foundry core program. Uh, we are we have been extending Cloud Foundry to integrate it with other cloud and services, so users can uh, operate entire cloud services easily and smoothly. So the main topic today uh, of my presentation today is why we chose Cloud Foundry for our base, uh, base system. Uh, this slide shows our primary requirements uh, when we started the project. Uh, we need an uh, extensible, portable, uh, scalable, and reliable base system. These points are uh, essential to an uh, enterprise path uh, service. So, for example, uh, the portability of application is very, very important for enterprise users because they want to uh, run their application both on uh, public cloud and private cloud. And sometimes they want to uh, or need to run their application even on uh, standalone environments. And what we uh, thought uh, more important was the extensible design of base system because cloud. Uh, a path service is not a separate service we provide, it, uh, provide for users. Uh, it must be integrated with other cloud and services, so we need, need it to extend the base system uh, by ourselves to connect it with other cloud and services. So, uh, Cloud Foundry was and is indeed uh, scalable, extensible, uh, reliable, and portable. The scalability of Cloud Foundry has already tested by many users. Uh, for example, uh, it works on a single node, and also it works on a cluster of more than 500 servers. 
And what we were, uh, we focused, uh, focus especially was its extensive design. Uh, Cloud Foundry consists of uh, loosely coupled components. So uh, each component exposes a uh, well-designed API. So we were able to uh, extend Cloud Foundry easily and rapidly. And the most important point was Cloud Foundry was the only open source uh, PaaS project available in 2011 uh, when we started the project. I don't mean uh, we were forced to choose Cloud Foundry. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> PeopleTel and VMware had a great foresight in creating a public PaaS project. And addition to that, Cloud Foundry was uh, written in Ruby. So the source code of Cloud Foundry is really uh, easily, easy to run and uh, extend. So that's why we chose Cloud Foundry. And what's the result of our choice? Uh, this slide shows our development timeline uh, for the last two years. Uh, it took only one and a half year to start uh, launch our commercial service. I think th this is amazingly fast because now Cloud Foundry is version two and it is mature, but when we started, it was a beta version and <laughs> still under development. Even so, we were able to start our service uh, just in one and a half years. And this list uh, is what we have developed so, so far. Uh, we have developed so many extensions in the last two years. Why we were able to so, uh, create so many extensions? Because uh, this is a very important point. Uh, Cloud Foundry was and is very extensible. Uh, I'll show you some uh, example of our uh, extensions. Uh, for example, first example is uh, user-friendly web interface. Uh, users can manage their applications and services on this web URI. And this, uh, this is a web application and it uses uh, internally the Cloud Controller REST API. So we basically did not add anything to the core component of Cloud Foundry, but we can, uh, we could, uh, could create this uh, web UI. And another example is our new, uh, our own log management system. Uh, this enable, enables users to manage users' application logs easily and uh, more function, with more functionality. For example, users can view their application logs on the web URI, and also they can search uh, such words uh, on the web URI. For, uh, for example, users can search logs with word error or something, and they can also uh, download entire logs from web web UI. So we added nothing to core component for this ex, uh, extension because uh, Cloud Foundry is very, very uh, consists of isolated components. So basically we can add uh, additional function without adding, uh, the, adding something to uh, core components. And another example is uh, a new service gateway for our Cloud and RDB service. Uh, Cloud and RDB service is a management, uh, managed RDB service. And we, are, uh, we developed a new uh, service gateway. Uh, for in version two, it is replaced with service broker, but uh, this is very, uh, isolated or well designed. So just we, uh, all what we had to do was uh, creating a single uh, service gateway. 
so very easy, and we can develop a new gateway rapidly. And last example is uh, is our uh, authentication system. Uh, cloud and we have uh, an authentication system for cl entire cloud and service. So our authentication system is not a part of uh, Cloud Foundry. So we need to connect to uh, Cloud and authentication system and uh, Cloud Foundry authentication system connect and uh, provisioning uh, provision IDs from uh, Cloud and uh, Service Dashboard. So, but uh, what we created was a simple and thin wrapper application that translates their protocol. So basically, uh, Cloud Controller was uh, exposed, uh, Cloud Controller exposed uh, uh, an API to provision IDs, so this was also easy to development, uh, easy to develop. So I'd like to conclude my presentation. Yes, we uh, successfully launch our public and commercial path service uh, with Cloud Foundry. Uh, our Cho uh, our choice was uh, correct, I can say with uh, confidence. Even with uh, the development of the uh, edit extension, but uh, even with the development, we were able to start our service just in one and a half years. And now, Cloud Foundry uh, is version two, and it is more reliable, extensible, portable, and scalable. So what everything uh, needed is already ready for you everywhere, <laughs> everyone here. So why not try Cloud Foundry and build your own path with it? Thank you for listening. <laughs>